talk on adoption of OSM data by local government uh, by Mr. Gaurav Thapa. About him, Gaurav Thapa currently works at Kathmandu Living Labs and is the project manager of Secondary Cities Pokhara, a field-based initiative of the Office of the Geographer of the State Department to Map for Resiliency, Disaster Management, and Emergency Preparedness. Gaurav leads a young team that's pioneering the use of open street map tools in the developing world. His current work has led him to establish OSM communities in Neelkanta Municipality, Lalitpur Metropolitan, Nepalgun Sub Metropolitan, Guleria Municipality, etc. And uh, he's here to share his experience of mapping the Pokhara uh, Lake Nath Metropolitan. Over to you. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Okay, I think this is good. Uh, that was a fantastic presentation start of the session. Uh, great job from the hot team there in Indonesia. Uh, so part of what I'm going to be talking about more, like uh, I don't want to go into detail about how the mapping was actually done or, or the numbers and, and all of those details. Um, mostly it follows um, very well from what, what, what the hot team has done in, in Jakarta or Semarang. So it's similar approach in uh, Pokhara as well, and in Nepal. Uh, but what I'm inspired more today to talk about is actually earlier uh, in the first session, you know, we had uh, uh, one of the professors talk about policies being driven and the challenge for maps to like be put uh, next to policymakers and put in front of policymakers and have them start using the data that we've created. So. Um, that, that's uh, sort of one of the things that I want to talk about. And the other one was also the, the keynote speaker also put, put a lot of uh, really good points uh, in front of us. So um, along those lines is where uh, this title of the slide is sort of from. So it's more about the adoption of OSM data by local government. And uh, Pohara Metropolitan City is more of a case study um, on how this can be made possible. Um, do I just tap here if I want to change the slide, or how does this work? Okay. Yeah. So uh, just a quick overview. I'm just going to be you know, talking about first of all this project's uh, funded under uh, Second Cities Initiative, and I think that this needs to be slightly higher. And then uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about also Kathmandu Living Lab and where I'm from and what I do. Um, then. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, what Pokhara Metropolitan is. And then, um, you know, just briefly, because the state of the map, Asia Conference, I'll talk about the state of the map. Um, what was it before? What was it after? Just, just brief, brief numbers. Then what I really want to talk about are the challenges in terms of adoption of OSM data, uh, the conditions for success, um, and, and the replication of uh, this effort, and the lessons learned. So um, Secondary Cities now um, is in its third year of this program, and it's a pretty big program um, that's taking place in all of these cities. And basically, it's a project from the Office of the Geographer at the US State Department. And uh, they fund these uh, projects for two to three years um, on collection of geospatial data. And, uh, but they leave it up to each organization to choose what, so, what sort of uh, tools they want to use and what sort of approach they want to take in the collection of geospatial data. And um, as you can see, there's one, one place is uh, Pokhara over there as well. So Pokhara was one of the first uh, cities under this project, uh, first six cities uh, that started. And um, we decided to do the collection of data using um, OSM and the open source tools available um, in the OSM environment. Um, so, this wasn't my slides, but okay. Um, maybe it didn't get saved. But yeah, I mean, with Carpenter Living Labs, we, we're still a fairly young organization. We started around five years ago. Um, and uh, we're known more for our work um, right after the, after the earthquake, like doing a lot of mapping work and uh, generating data around that. And most people know us uh, from that. But uh, we've been uh, working on several projects. And uh, one of the things that we're uh, 
really excited about was uh, the project called Secondary Cities in Pokhara, and we were the local implementing partner over there. So the Tusi Pokhara project focused on development of disaster resilience and emergency management in the city of Pokhara. And our approach for there was uh, to use uh, and create a robust OpenStreetMap data for the city to use. So and, and the, at the end, our goal was uh, always for the city to take ownership of this data and then like be able to maintain, um, and update, and you know like really utilize the data by the time we left. Well, I had all these pictures, but I guess uh, I don't know what's uh, okay. And the 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 city of Pokhara. These are just my notes. Uh, the city of Pokhara is. Uh, 200 kilometers west from uh, Kathmandu. It's, uh, it's actually the second largest city and it's a rapidly growing city. Uh, one of the challenges that it faces uh, with its rapid urbanization and also being a real regional hub of that area is uh, its, its susceptibility to disaster and especially natural disaster. So it lies on the western segment of uh, the Himalayan uh, fault and that one hasn't erupted in over 500 years. So it's due for a mega quake. That's, that's what the geologists uh, say. Um, so with that in mind and with, with our understanding of the need for having geospatial database, uh, database in hand, um, we decided to choose this city as one, the project that we were going to do in Nepal. So, uh, so these are just some of the numbers for um, building, these are, you know, buildings, roads, what, what we managed to do, what we managed to collect. Um, I actually want to, okay. I don't know why the slides are all. Uh, it's okay. I guess I didn't have the update. It wasn't updated or something. That's fine. Yeah. So, so these are the numbers, and then we have a before and after. And actually, uh, with Pokhara and a lot of uh, cities in Nepal, the geospatial database was very limited. Um, so if we look at the before and after, it's pretty much going from a blank map to having something that's like you know been fully occupied. And as you can see, because we wanted to map all the critical infrastructures, um, almost every single element was mapped. And later on, we revised this further when we you know started working closer with the uh, metropolitan city. And the city officials asked us, like, you know, we want like more focus on tourism, or we want also information about hotels in the city. So we mapped those as well. So it was a it was a very much of a, a living project in terms of like, you know, you kept changing and you kept updating what you felt was important and needed to be mapped. Um, along with these, obviously, if you go to OpenStreetMap and you look at Pohera now, you'll see that there's there's deeper levels to this. There's secondary attributes that have been collected. Uh, regarding disasters. Um, so all those things are, are important and, and that's just the state of the map now and I think Pohora is a very robust uh, map that we were able to create. So going to the challenges, you know, there were multiple challenges to work uh, we carried out. Like in, 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 in any project, there are challenges. Um, but with like adoption of geospatial data, and also like trying to get people to map in OpenStreetMap, one of the big challenges is that you know, you're heavily reliant on the local people participating, the citizens participating, and then um, how good are they at that, right? There's still a lack of understanding in, in, in these areas, and I'm, I'm sure it's also the same outside of this conference. In, in the ideas about uh, new ge geography and, and volunteer geographic information systems. Uh, people still don't understand that like anybody can map or like you can like, but like what if I map something wrong? Like, you know, they'll be very hesitant. And that's a, that's a huge challenge that, um, that we face. And, and on top of that, what you'll also find is like, you know, there's a, um, there's a very strong traditional mindset that cartography and geography are very expert-driven fields. And so people don't want to take that risk of like spoiling anything or like, you know, causing some sort of problems. Um, uh, the other thing is like if you see some of the people here, 
you know, there's also a tech gap between generations. So the older people, they don't, they're hesitant about using a mobile phone. Like it's like, no, you can map through a smartphone and, or you can take a survey through a smartphone. They're, they're usually hesitant about that. So it's, um, it, it becomes a challenge in terms of like, you have to overcome that, those things or you have to like have them uh, be paired up with a younger person. Um, so these are you know, some of the challenges that we really faced. And the other one, last one, was uh, obviously the challenge was that Pokhara Metropolitan actually went through a drastic political change. Um, so we didn't have local elections for 18 years in Nepal. And then last year, suddenly, we had our first uh, local elections, and we got a new mayor. And then so it was like, you know, now we have to start working with this new a government, a new government system, uh, trying to like you know bring them on board, trying to explain everything to them, and uh, it's a different system because before it was very bureaucratic driven. Now it's like uh, popularly elected leaders on the same page uh, technically as well. Um, so conditions for success. Uh, one thing that I've realized uh, works really well is uh, choose a thematic area. This will help to focus the mapping effort, even though maps will be like eventually used. Like the government won't just use it for you know disaster purposes, use it for planning purposes, purposes, but for your project to make it w run well and work well, uh, try and choose a thematic area. Um, then uh, you know have uh, develop a local champion inside and outside of the government, uh, local partners. So over here I've got pictures of two uh, people. Both of their names uh, Krishna. The first name is Krishna. The one on the left is uh, Krishna Bhandari. He's a professor at Pasimansal campus. And he was instrumental in trying to bring OSM into the campus curriculum for us and bringing the students on board. The other one works uh, for the local Red Cross chapter. He's the secretary there called Krishna Timil Sina. And he was also super excited about trying to bring OpenStreetMap in their vulnerability capacity assessment uh, process. So I just wanted to like, you know, make it clear that like, you need champions it's not just one organization working, it's, it's various organizations and the government on board. Um, so along those lines, um, what we also need is to have like, you know, more and more stakeholders on board. Um, and then this is actually an image from uh, the Pokhara Metropolitan Office, where we like, you know, first gave them a breakdown of like how this data was being used so we created a web portal with uh, the information, and I'm just giving a brief breakdown on that. And so it's important to like, you know, go right up to the uh, policymakers and let them know about what exactly you're doing. So similarly, um, the other thing is like, you know, do not limit um, yourself to just like, you know, volunteers that you think are going to be good mappers, like geomatics engineering students or computer engineering students. Try and reach out to as many people as possible. And um, you know, young people as well. It, a lot of it is also about just like, you know, sensitizing people, just letting them know what it is. And uh, the other thing is like, you know, try and build it into the school system or the curriculum. Try and like, you know, get as much as possible in there. Because at the end of the day, we are going to be like, you know, leaving the area, going, uh, going to be like going once the funding runs out. And then the local people have to have the capacity to continue maintaining this data set. So you have to go in with that exit strategy in mind and understanding those things. So once, uh, you know, uh, so with all these things in mind, we've like, you know, been able to replicate some of the success in this project in other uh, areas as well. Um, uh, Gansham earlier, who is an IT officer at Nepal Guns Metropolitan, a sub-metropolitan, you know, talked about the approaches there. And those were like similar tools that we brought from the 2C approach over there to create the database. And same thing has been done in other cities as well. Uh, we've been fortunate to also like, you know, replicate this outside of Nepal. So we actually had a chance to go to Bali, Indonesia, and in Denpasar give an OSM workshop. So I think uh, Harry mentioned how massive Indonesia is. So they're doing such great work there, but like even though it's in, in Indonesia, there's like a lack of data there. So it was very interesting for us as well because we know HOT has such a strong presence over there. So these are just a few pictures from there that I wanted to share. You know, similarly, um, so we are technically supported by 
uh, our team at Colorado State University, this is them. And uh, they've been you know, helping us out, out a lot. And uh, now, finally, we're like working in Indore in India as well. And over there, we're like trying to look at uh, mapping and mapping inform health risks in informal settlements. So that's something that we're working on. So just give me one minute, and uh, I'll be done. So uh, la the lessons learned from this is beyond the generation of data. Use the use of data being generated and why it is being generated is important. Um, and in order to make that successful, we need to live and work at the site and you know, really understand what the local people's needs are and also like con constantly improve and like improve that data. Because as soon as it's stagnant, uh, stagnant, it's not as good as it used to be. Um, so, uh, and, and also sometimes when you're approaching the local government, uh, because we're using students and volunteers, uh, telling them the economics of that, because students are cheaper to hire. Them realizing that, you know, will make them like want to like take this approach. Because government is all about like, you know, how much money we've got and all these things. So this is just the mayor actually telling his ward, uh, ward chiefs that we want this map on OSM and this and that. So uh, one of the outcomes from that is, is the atlas, like uh, atlas that they talked about. We produced this map book, but it was funded by the government for us, uh, at least the publication cost and uh, the volunteers' uh, uh, movements. And so we've helped them produce that. So. Um, that's uh, pretty much it. These are just pictures from the field of the students working. And, um, and yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Gaurav. We can probably take one quick question, if any. So. So uh, with focus on local community, uh, can you unfold the process of people's participation? Uh, Sorry? Uh, with reference to the local community, since uh, maps have to be updated from time to time, new information have to be added. Yeah. So uh, what was the process of participation or the mechanism? So, so the process uh, of participation is, uh, I mean, you have to do a lot of like reaching out to people. You have to go to the community. You have to talk to them. You have to like tell them why you're there, what are you trying to achieve, but what is it in them for, for them? Like, you know, you have to like make it clear this is a win-win situation. Um, so you want to map as much as uh, what they think is important as well. So for that, they have to be part of the process. So it might be starting off with just small few organizations and then like reaching out to really grassroots organizations as well. Or you can, uh, once you have something concrete, then approach the government and uh, bring them on, on board. So that's, that's how we did it. But there might be a different way of doing it in a different country, depending on what is uh, the legality of you going out there and mapping as well. 